What am I talking about? I'm Brian Kennedy. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, infrastructure as code, as uh, project based, instead of the way everybody does it, which is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did a lot of research. I did a lot of interviewing different people everywhere, and everyone does it wrong. There we go. My uh, presentation is on GitHub, so uh, someone had asked, is it hurting? Let's go back. Yes, it's hurting. Um, but this is more than just a presentation because I'm building this into an entire series of presentations and an entire paradigm of how to do IT. Because I don't know how. <laughs> um, now this is doing a presentation. This is bad. I want you to read off, but because it's not just a presentation. Um, uh, talking about who I am, I am the guy um, when a new guy comes in and says, hey, I want to be a developer, what language should I learn? I'm the guy that says math. Uh, I always go to foundations. Um, when you take a pebble from my hand, grasshopper, now you are, are ready to learn and poop. So always start, whatever you do, start with first principles. Start with a good foundation. Um, in infrastructure as code, you're writing code. So I expect your foundation to be good, um, <coughs> the good code. Uh, Software development um, best practices, not infrastructure as code best practices. Software is software is best practices. So these are not anyone's specific uh, published book, but just some um, that I'm sure we all agree on. I think I can zoom in. Uh, is it? Yes. Control plus. Yeah, just You're doing it wrong. Big <laughs> <laughs> foundation. There we go. Hey. <laughs> so, um, all of these, there's just some some points from software development that best practices you all probably should agree on. First, documentation. You should always be doing documentation. Let's stop here. <laughs> <laughs> But you should be doing it no matter how bad your developers are at it, which is all of them. <laughs> um, keep yourself code simple. DRI, DRI, don't repeat yourself. Um, in terms of Terraform, uh, like HashiCorp, everybody does this pretty well. Modules, uh, containerized, modularized, everything pretty well. Um, everybody's doing this correctly. Um, clear definition of requirements, also <laughs> covered by doing good module structure. We have, like, where I am now is a finance, and we have requirements of everything encrypted at risk. At. So you can make, so your RDS module, you can make sure the latest um, TLS is a requirement. You can make sure encryption at risk isn't a requirement. So your developers or whoever is creating your resources don't care, they just say I want RDS, and you know what's going to happen. So that's also already well done in the, um, Terraform or any other infrastructures too. Uh, uh, just, I haven't specifically applied it to infrastructures code, but Agile, small milestones, move fast, fail fast, fail cheap, fail often. That's how you get there. Um, now, um, like I said, this is going to be a series of presentations, um, effective tools. Um, uh, I, I use Atlantis. Um, it's very good for a DevSecOps model. It's separation of concerns. A lot of people put put their keys to their AWS infrastructure in GitHub and help GitHub to go create infrastructure. I don't do that. GitHub is for code. Um, AWS is for infrastructure. So Atlantis is how I can separate the two. That's separation of concerns. That'll be a big presentation later. And code review and quality control. Um, another requirement of my uh, my company, finance, um, is gates. Before you, the developer can push whatever he wants to dev and have his fun. He can't go into QA until QA says this is allowed in QA. Um, most most um, 
CICD pipeline developers have got that kind of gateway that before it can leave QA, QA has done their testing and they sign off. You've got that when you're writing code, but you should also have that when you're writing infrastructure as code. And that I haven't seen anybody else do very well. And install and deploy automation. Um, most people doing infrastructure as code are SREs, platform engineers, that type of thing. That's your job, is to make sure that when somebody deploys to QA and QA tests it, it's just a button for us to get the exact same thing in the broad, the exact same way. Um, immutable, immutable, immutable artifacts, so you build once your, your containerized code, that same artifact, binary artifact, gets deployed in the environment. We don't build it again for product to get different environment values in. That's <clears throat> um, kind of your job as a platform developer or a DevOps guy is to make sure when somebody pushes the button for QA, QA tests it, they push the same button for product. Same thing goes. R, you shouldn't need to bother with QA to begin with, should you? <clears throat> uh, so that's part of what, we'll, what is covered in today's. Also is um, pick an appropriate design and stick to it. Uh, this is probably a point of contention. Uh, it was already decided where I am. Microservice um, is the design. Uh, there are some cases you want a monolith, but that was not my choice in this point. Microservices, so microservices all the way, which means since the code is compartmentalized into microservices, your IEC should be as well. So we know our software development best practices. Let's see how people write terraforms, infrastructures. Everybody I've talked to, all, just about every case, there's going to be one repo with all of their terraform. They'll have modules, which is pretty good, I mentioned. People are doing that pretty well. And then they'll have their development environment. Everything it takes to build out that is in one folder. Their QA environment is another folder. So you see right here we have a user database. It's been in QA, QA's tested it. It's time to go to prod. They go and copy paste from QA to prod under Terraform plan. Now, if you remember from before, it is copy paste a good practice. Is that how you get code to prod? No. No. But that's how everybody does infrastructure as code, apparently. <laughs> so the right way. Um, the way I, when I started from the beginning, I did not look at how terror, how HashiCorp does best practices. I did not look at how everybody's doing. I looked at what we just went over. So, so I've laid out a a infrastructure as code to build out the base account. There's one infrastructure as code project for account. Um, your modules are separate module repos. They don't really have to be. I mean, we've actually, I've actually got many of many repos or a repo that are a collection of different related modules. I mean, that's not where separation is necessary. It's each project should be its own repo. His own project. Hmm. Um, and if you've been doing Terraform, you're like, how can you do that? Because you need VPC IDs to deploy your RDS, and uh, and that's in your account state. Um, that's not difficult. If you start with the best practice to begin with, and think about how to do that instead of just, um, it's actually very easy. Uh, um, Terraform actually already gives you remote states, so you build out your account <coughs> with your account project, um, and that's a, and that account is a, and that state file is saved in one place. This is how simple it is that your project base can just refer to this is this particular bit of code would be in my um, what I call global module before. So this isn't every project doesn't have to have this code. You always should modularize your code. So the code to actually pull remote state is a module. <coughs> um, also, this is one of the conventions 
put your back end somewhere not part of the repo. <laughs> In this case, we use S3 bucket is where our state goes. Um, but it's a Terraform remote state, easily easily define that. So what we have is all, let's see. Yeah, um, as you can see the interpolations, the key is in the same bucket. Um, these values are all that a project needs to go to dev. These three values define enough to find the correct environment, uh, core state to deploy correctly. Um, these are not part of the project. These will be part of that that uh, presentation number two on Atlantis um, to see how that works. So a simple project is take your global module that pulls in your variable information from your account, your global level information. Um, everybody should have a tags module that enforces tags. Because tagging is very important for a cloud environment. And just start laying out the things you need for, in this case, our application needs a database for keeping track of users in a DynamoDB or a Aurora serverless cluster in this case. Um, as you see, this is very simple compared to what a RDS um, definition requires. Because, like I said before, everybody does that correctly. That's an RDS module. All of the things that are have to do for every RDS make it magic. So all the developer cares about is is I need one. I want to call it user DB. And actually, these should be in in the module. And then anything else like your sign up to you, your project, building your user management part of your website, put it all in one project, but that one project is one silo. Um, let's see questions. Before we do that, um, an example of how these go, uh, this is one that actually went from one environment to another. Uh, this is the way an Atlantis looks. Uh, he created a PR saying, hey, this is in QA, and QA has signed off on it. Um, when he creates the PR, Atlantis automatically plans it for you. Um, and he doesn't know, he does not have access to any of these accounts. He can't go and cre create uh, any of these objects, which is another thing everybody else is doing. Part of each developer has access to their production <coughs> account so they can do their Terraform plane and apply from their machine. Don't do that. Separate your concerns. That's what uh, Atlantis is for. So it has planned it and somewhere down here. I was happy that he was not deploying any Bitcoin miners or anything, so I approved it. Atlantis, <laughs> Atlantis um, does not allow, if he, if he had tried to do this Atlantis apply before, he, before an important person approved it, it would have refused. Uh, and also this is already closed, so I can't show you some of the checks, but yeah, checks will be here that it shows uh, QA are the only ones that can be approved to go to QA. Um, release management are the only ones that can approve to go to release and merge it once it's done. And protection, you can't merge it until Atlantis has signed off and said the apply was successful because you mess up your state comparisons if you don't. There's a lot of protections in there. That'll be protection three, you know. <laughs> So the way I've done it is integrating GitHub, the, Atlanta, the Terraform, with Atlantis to control it. So we are running out of time, so we can get to questions. First question, I'm going to go ahead and ask, ask it. Um, so you've, you've created all your resources, you've got a bunch of RDSs, but now your standards say so you have to change your RDS module. Well, you're already working in Microsoft microservice architecture, so you hopefully already have that automation that if somebody comes out with a CVE for this app, it's a, a simple trigger 
build that automatically goes through most of your gateways, you have to do the same, pretty much the same thing with your infrastructure as, pro as project as well. What else? Any other questions? How is this approach different than just having one not, each? <laughs> yeah, having one big one that just has like separate TFRs for each environment that keeps that doesn't have a module and folder for each environment that keeps it all in one, but we haven't separated out like a BPC, you know, project and this. It's just it's all together, and then you just pass in your variables for each environment. Um. Well. Where are you keeping those variables in environments? I mean, is it something you're, I mean, is that like, you have to copy paste that in so that you're running in your QA environment instead of your dev, how are you setting that? This, all, you're, all you do, the developer says, okay, I'm ready for dev, I merge from the develop where I've got all my code reviews, dev, and I'm trying to for you. All he cares about is he's going to dev, but he has merged to, or he has created the PR to dev. When that's complete and merged, everything's good, and <coughs> our, QA and then it clicks as well. This part I haven't done, but right now QA says, okay, this is ready for QA. Start the PR and make sure. And the exact same. Thing. Nobody even, they don't have access to AWS, but they don't care because they don't need it. They don't even need to know the account numbers. Do you ever run into situations where different projects need to access a resource that was provisioned by another project? Um, well, in like, let's see, is this where I have the example? The example, like the EKS cluster is necessary for just about everything. I kind of provision, I put that information into the global state, the account state. But uh, there is other, I have to remember which, but there's a couple of very specific instances where, yes, there's other remote states, another module that actually is a remote state. 